So Bunny is the global content delivery platform that truly hops. I just had to say it. That was so cool. I <laughs> love that title. Uh, in this video, I want to check out something new from Bunny. If you've not heard of Bunny, it is pretty cool. Um, it has tons of different products. Actually, if we hover over the products drop down here, we can see there's a ton. They got CDN, they got streaming, and they got storage, they got optimization for images, um, and so much more. DNS is pretty cool, pretty wild, pretty big, pretty popular. My edge scripting, which was one of their newer products recently, fonts. But today I want to check out the magic containers. We're not going to dive into the documentation and go too deep. What we'll do is we will log in, we will deploy a container, and we'll check out some of the configuration. Now you might be thinking, what is a magic container? Why do I need a magic container? Before we get started with magic containers, I just want to talk very briefly about Edge. Because I've been very guilty for a long time in the past, and I know this is this is more apparent in the JavaScript community, and I think this is because there's a lot of different tools that are accessible, widely available for serverless functions. We often associate that Edge is very restrictive in terms of what we can do. So I think, oh, well, I can't run a container at the edge because, you know, I can't run these persistent apps. I don't have access to Docker and Node and stuff like that. I've got to use these edge runtimes. Well, those are two different things. Um, you can do both. You can run edge, script, edge functions at the edge for users, but you can actually, like with what we are going to find out today with Bunny, we can actually run a container at the edge. And what Bunny will do is automatically orchestrate when those should be deployed and scaled up and scaled down. That's all done magically, um, hence the name. So this is pretty cool. I can run my Docker containers and I can let Bunny take control of that. So here we can see whatever these legacy edge solutions are, here we pay for um, those uh, cores even when they're not being used. And maybe that's why you know, a lot of us, including myself, use these serverless platforms where you only pay for what's consumed. But if you have something like a container, well, it's got to be up, it's got to be waiting for requests. But with Bunny, what we can do is we can say, okay, here is what I want, here are all my cores, um, here's where I want to be scaling to my users, and that's all taken care of automatically. You don't need to sit there and you don't need to work out, okay, I've got users in this part of the world or this part of the world, Bunny will figure all of that out. These are experts in DNS as well um, and cloud solutions. So they've got a pretty good idea where users are, where requests come from, and they're able to take that with their AI powered engine, deploy and scale, auto provision your different containers all over the world. And what we can see here is the cost is phenomenal. It's so much cheaper per hour than what we've seen traditionally with those uh, legacy platforms. So. I don't want to promise too much. Let's take a quick look and figure out for ourselves how this works, how easy it is to set up. Um, and to do that, what you'll need to do is create an account. If you've already got an account like me, you can log in. Um, here I am on my dashboard. This video isn't sponsored, but the Bunny team were kind enough to grant me some credits so I could try this out. But if you're a new user, you get access to try things out for 14 days anyways. So get signed up for an account and you'll get access to all of that. Now, if I go to the magic containers area, here we can see we can add our first app. So let's do that. I'm gonna add my first app. I'm just gonna give this a name. I'm gonna follow their example here and call this my app. And then we can choose magic or a custom deployment. Now let's start with magic deployment because that's where all of the magic happens. I wonder how many times I'm going to say magic in this video. Someone should take count and let me know in the comments. Now, once we select that, we can then add a container. And I've actually deployed already to GitHub a repository with a simple express server. And here we have a very simple express server. You could use Hono, you could use any routing library you like. You could even just use plain old node to do this. But yeah, I think everyone's familiar with X or at least it's primitives of the router that it has. So here we're just displaying a simple hello world string uh, on the page. Uh, but let's close it out and have a quick look at the Docker file. This is as basic and bog standard as you can get for Docker. And if we go on over to the workflow, here I've got a very basic GitHub workflow that runs when I push to the main branch 
Um, and here we have a job build and publish that runs that has a few steps, gets the code, logs into the registry, extracts some of the metadata, but most importantly, it uses the Docker push action to create a new tagged image that pushes to the registry, which is pretty cool because we can then take that and deploy that to Bunny. Um, and, and that's what we have. So this repository here is pushed to GitHub. I have this already. So if we do a GitHub browse and we open this in our browser, here we can see that I ran this a few days ago. I sneakily tried this out before recording. So that's what this little tick is here. This has already kind of created that image for us. And if we go down to packages here and we can see here three days ago, we have that magic containers demo that was pushed for us. So all we need to do with Bunny is tell it this and it will automatically run that pull command for us, which is pretty cool. So back inside of Bunny here, we need to give some details on our container. Uh, we'll just create one container and we'll select the GitHub public repository here. My repo is public. Um, but I'm going to call this magic uh, containers demo. That's the name of the image, select that. And then we can choose which tag we want to do. If you've got different containers, you might want to specify different tags. Um, but I'm just going to click latest here. And then we'll add endpoint. We'll talk more about the Anycast network uh, a little bit later. Here we've got some monitoring. We're just going to keep all of this to uh, the disabled state for now. If you have any environment variables as well for the container, this is where you'll want to set those as well. Maybe something like a database string uh, or a secret key for your for signing tokens um, and some additional settings here we won't touch. But if you've got some specific things for your uh, container that you want to specify, you can do that in the settings. But here we've got a general settings. And as I spoke about before here, this is coming soon, but this is pretty cool. Uh, you can have persistent storage with your container, um, which is really cool. This means you could have a database, a SQLite file even, that has persisted with each container um, or with the container that has persisted um, at those different regions, which is phenomenal. Um, we can reduce some of the latency there. So let's add that container. We've got everything configured now. So all we should really have to do is click next and confirm the estimated cost. And we can see here, we have, uh, you know, 10 cents per month per gigabyte. Uh, if we go up, uh, everything is looking good. So we can confirm and we can create that. Now we can see on the map here that it's processing that base region. It's getting things set up. It's pulling that image and it's going to deploy it there, which is pretty cool in itself. But as we make requests, depending on where we are, those regions will increase. Now we can configure the regions here. We can configure how much we want to auto scale. Um, you know, if we have a certain budget in mind for this, uh, we can limit uh, what uh, is provisioned there. Um, we can even set uh, the number of active regions as well um, to reduce that cost. It's just set at the 41 regions, which is just crazy. Um, you know, there's tons of flexibility there. Uh, provisioning type. In another video, we'll probably cover balanced and cost optimized. But for uh, this video, what is here today of March 2025, latency optimized is the provision type, which is pretty cool. This means that uh, new instances and regions will be provisioned um, to best achieve latency for your users. Further on down, we can see here we've got some enabled regions. We've got all of those 41 enabled, but maybe as you want to turn off some of those regions, you can do that inside of here. So maybe in Europe, we don't want to have everything selected so we can deselect those, save a bit of money um, and um, you know, to the detriment, I guess, of the user with your app, they're gonna have some added latency if they're in those uh, regions. Um, also the base, we have one base, we can turn on a base for 14 static, instances to be ran in those uh, regions, which is just pretty crazy. Um, that's all done, handled automatically for us. Um, pretty cool. Um, base regions are the regions that will be statically provisioned and will always be running. So as demand increases or decreases, those will persist, those will remain. Um, but with the kind of enabled regions and what's magic, that provisioning uh, up and down of scaling those containers, 
that will be done automatically by uh, Bunny, which is pretty cool. So I think we're good with some of the changes here. Um, maybe we don't need all of the base. I've unselected Europe here because Paris was already there. Maybe we change the base to be London. That's closest to me. Um, maybe we add one more base. Uh, let's put that in Madrid. Uh, actually, no, let's select another one. Let's select um, Los Angeles here and we'll click Save Changes. So we'll have three base set up with all of our different regions. So that is set and saved. And here we can see we've got three different base regions, which is pretty cool. And we can see here we have these regular um, regions already set. And at the very top, we can see that we have an IP address where if we copy that to the clipboard and we visit that, here we can see, hello from Magic Containers. This app is running on GitHub Container Registry. So I paused the video and I used a proxy to make some additional requests. And here we can see where I made a request closest to Toronto that Bunny is automatically scaling a container there because it's seen increased demand from users. And we can see here within a few seconds, it's deployed that and that is now serving users closest to them, which is pretty cool. And as you deploy this to production, you link up your URL. Of course, you'll want to get some observability into what's going on. And there's a few parts to this. One is the actual stats of what's going on here. So we can see some of the average latency down here. We can see some of the active regions and the traffic that was served, um, but also we can see and observe some of the logs. And what's cool about this is we can see here all of the different regions and their logs. Um, for all of the different pods that were created and accessed, which is pretty cool. So that's it for this video on Bunny's Magic Containers. But in another video, maybe we can check out one of the other Bunny products or how we can extend Magic Containers with persistent storage when that comes and anything else. Let me know in the comments what you think and what we could record a video on next.